Are you gonna make a mess? It's just hilarious that to turn around these beautiful frames and to be like, lucky time. Hello and welcome back to my channel. So my name is Emily Garvey and today we're back with another DIY video. I love these videos, but they're also really hard to film. So you're gonna see me wear like five different outfits throughout this video because I've been just slowly working on these projects in between nap times, all, all the things, you know. And if you saw my last video, you know that my husband graduated from medical school last month and this week was actually his first week of residency. So there's been a lot of things changing around here, just different routine, getting used to everything. Just a little update, I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to continue doing videos every week. I love doing these, but I also wanna make sure that I prioritize my children, my family, and if this isn't leading me closer to God, then this isn't something that I want to continue to pursue in my life. So I will keep y'all updated on that, but I am really enjoying the just finding time to do them. So today I'm going to show you two different techniques for making art for your home that looks super expensive. I'll tell you how much I spent on these at the end, but sneak peek, it was really good. There might actually be one in the frame right now, but wait until the end to see the other three. First one is actually an anthropology dupe. I will insert a picture of it here. So as you can tell, very expensive. This one, I'm going to be using one of the canvases that I got at the Goodwill bins last week. So this was probably like 25 cents for the canvas and then I had to buy some other stuff, but we'll jump right into it and then I'll show you how it turned out at the very end. I think I'm gonna kind of sketch it out a little bit first to make sure that I understand how to even make that pattern and then I'll go ahead with the hot glue. This is harder than I thought it was going to be. What a mess. Okay, we'll do that. It turned out pretty well, I think. I just felt like I was doodling. So I'm going to go ahead and put the hot glue on there now that this is nice and warm. All right, so we're done putting all the hot glue on there and it was, wasn't too bad, just gave me a wrist workout. And so now Gideon's gonna help me take off all these little tiny gluey strings. That's the worst part about working with hot glue is that those annoying little strings. You know what I mean, you know. All right, I had high hopes that we would finish at least one coat of paint before uh, Benjamin woke up, but. I cut something off. Okay. Right now, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and use this Waverly chalk paint, ivory chalk paint. I used this in the lamp DIY, if you saw that in my summer decorating video. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint and we'll probably have to do these two coats. Are you gonna make a mess? <laughs> I want to make a frame for this and so I went to the hardware store and bought this piece of wood and I think it's like eight feet long. Um, hopefully that's long enough. I didn't even do the math. I'm going to go ahead and use my miter saw here and at a 45 degree angle so that it can be nice and jutted up in the corners. You could use a miter box for this and just like a hand saw and I actually would prefer that just because it would be more precise but I don't have one. This is the only saw we have and so what we're going to do with this. A dragonfly? He's, he's dead. A dead dragonfly. <laughs> okay. So the frames turned out really well. Um, I can't really show you exactly, but they, I was worried that my lengths were going to be a little bit off since like the saw takes off a little bit and so it's hard to take, like make exact measurements, but it turned out super well. Pretty proud of myself. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll probably use some glue and then just use some finishing nails in the corner, just nail it directly into the frame since this is just wood in the back. Well, 
that did not work. So just to be real upfront with you guys, I did not watch a lot of videos about how to do this. I watched one and they made it look very easy. So indeed, my husband was right. This project is going to be a little bit more tedious than expected. So nails are not going to work. They use a like nail gun and I guess maybe that has more like force to it. When I was putting the nails in, it was just bending the nails. And also it was kind of shifting the whole thing. So I was having a really hard time keeping them like square, even though I have them clamped on there. I'm going to shift directions. I got my hot glue gun out and I have E6000. So the little trick that you can do with E6000, this one is like a really strong glue. You can glue with the E6000 and then use the hot glue to make it bond like really quick. Um, that way everything will like hold together. I did end up nailing these parts though. Oh, that's actually on there really secure. Somehow that nail took really well. Okay. Anyone ever notice that the glue just like comes out? Like it's like pressurized or something. It's very, here we go. I unpressurized it, I guess. These clamps are definitely a two hand clamp. They're like really, really hard. I wonder how much grip strength this is. I am a PT, so I wouldn't hear about these things. <laughs> Stick around until the end of today's video and I will show you how that one turned out. I've been looking on Etsy uh, to get some prints to fill the frames that I've recently thrifted. However, I saw online that there is a free, like open access through different museums. So I looked at three different ones. I think it was like the National Gallery of Art and the Smithsonian and one other one. The Smithsonian is the one that I found to be the best. So I'll insert some clips here of the search engine that you use. You're able to narrow down your selection a whole lot. However, there's definitely a lot of stuff that you wouldn't put in your home. And so I went ahead and put some links of my like favorites and runner ups to this project uh, down below. And if you want to go ahead and find some more on there and leave them in the comments below, maybe we could start like a whole database of like the ones that would be appropriate for a home. So I went ahead and ordered these off of FedEx and I ordered them in just like the biggest size possible on like heavy cardstock paper. I will show you now how I made them look a little bit more authentic. All right, so we're back from FedEx and I thought I would just show you as I open these up um, how they turned out. All right. Okay, this one was supposed to be much smaller. This, I thought it was gonna be like four on here so that it would be really tiny and I could put it in a little frame. That's okay. Um, this one, oh, they're huge. Um, looks really good. The detail is really, really nice on these. They do look like magazine paper though, a little bit. Like they're definitely thicker than magazine paper, but they have a little bit of a shine to them. So I'm gonna try a technique that I saw where you can use matte Mod Podge and use, I'm just gonna use like a variety of different paint brushes that I have to see if I can mimic like an original painting to give it a little bit of texture. I think this video might have to be titled um, Interrupted by Nap Time because my goodness, <laughs> every time I get my toddler down, this one wakes up. So <laughs> he is going to join us. And now that I had some time to let this dry, I really like it. It has like a little bit of texture there, but mostly it just gets the, the shine off of it. Makes it look much more authentic. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on these big ones and then see if I can get them in their frames. You just love that light, I know. So I started off just making straight lines with the Mod Podge, but I found that it helped a lot more to make like circular motions and little brushstroke motions. It made it look much more authentic. Okay, so these are done drying, and I think they look really good. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that on the camera, and it probably looks more reflective there because I have like a really bright light on it, but it looks in person much more matte, and it has a texture to it that is really nice. So I'm hoping that that still shows up once it's like up on the wall and everything. I never even show you guys the frames that I'll be using. These I did thrift, so they were in a thrift haul video recently. I found these, both, each of them were $5. I got this one for 25 cents, <laughs> so I like that they all have this like linen mat here. I think that 
pictures and art and everything just looks so much better when it has a mat. All right, guys. <laughs> so I am just, I don't wanna go to the store. This is, this is like a theme. I'm gonna figure out a way to do this with things that I have because this is what is going on. It looks great, I love it in here, but it is like bowing because the paper it's, is pretty flimsy and everything. So I need to attach it onto something that is not going to bend and ideally I would have foam core, but I don't have any of that. So I just found like the biggest boxes that I have in the pantry and I'm gonna cut them up and put them on the back of this and I think I will just use the Mod Podge since this is pretty much glue. It's just hilarious that like, I'm gonna turn around these frames, these beautiful frames, it's gonna be like lucky times. <laughs> oh well. I left these to dry on my coffee table just with a bunch of heavy books on top so they would be extra flat. All right, so let me show you how these turned out. This one, I am super impressed with. Once I just gave up on the nails, it turned out much easier. <laughs> so definitely recommend just using really good glue and it seems really sturdy. I think it looks pretty darn expensive if I do say so myself. The only thing I would make a little bit different was making sure that these lines were like parallel to each other, just because I think that it would make it look more finished, but it's not perfect, that's okay. Nothing in my home or my life is perfect, so I'm okay with this one. This one turned out to be less than $9 because the wood was like $8. Wood is so expensive these days. The canvas was like 25 cents at most because it was from the Goodwill dig. And then the next ones were these frames, which I was super impressed with They how they turned out. I think they look very nice, very expensive and I've already put up this one on my wall. This one I'm gonna wait to put up until I do my gallery wall, which is coming up soon. And then this one turned out really well as well. It was just definitely would recommend not using such a texturized brush that falls apart and then having all these like gl gloopy, gloopy <laughs> spots on it because I think that's where that one kind of went wrong. This one, the frame was 25 cents. And then the insert, I mean, this was like $2.50, so less than $3 for that. And then these, the frames were just a little bit more expensive. The frames were each $5. And then the art was like $2.50, so less than $8 for these. So I think that is pretty darn good for some beautiful pieces of art. So if you enjoyed today's video, I would so appreciate if you would give it a like down below and maybe comment if you find something that you really like on the Smithsonian or any of those other open access sites. I would love to see it. It's definitely a lot to scroll through. So it helps to have like a narrowed down list, I think. I will be back next week with another thrift haul video to show you what we got while we were on vacation up in Steenhatchee and then all the way up in Maine. So stick around for that one and make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss it. So I hope you all have a very blessed day and I will catch you in the next one. Bye friends.